I can see if we can probably get one. Yeah. Well, no, he doesn't. No way, he does not. He, somebody doesn't eat like much. He needs the sorba, he needs the salad, and a piece of meat. I'm going to 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم، بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين، وأزكى صلوات الله وسلامه على النبي الأمين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. آه يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم، قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا هو خير مما يجمعون. Oh Prophet of Allah say in the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mercy, let them rejoice. It's better than what they bore in whatever acquisition position of this world. Uh, the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allowed us to witness the month of Ramadan, uh, to endure aid, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all that from us, inshallah. We're very happy to resume our tarbiyah session, your session. I wouldn't have in the month of Ramadan, so just to give you the time, inshallah, to uh, focus on the ibadah. And instead, we had Juz a day in lieu of that. Uh, today we have a very special uh, guest, uh, Imam and Sheikh Abdullah Jaber. Yeah, he's an act activist, educator, um, a resident scholar, uh, and uh, he is the executive director of uh, Care Florida, the chapter in Florida. And he was also the executive director of uh, the chapter in Georgia, and also was serving as the community advisor for the chapter in Los Angeles, so from West Coast and East Coast, mashallah. Um, I had the pleasure to uh, listen to him and, you know, subhanAllah, to pray together this month of Ramadan and uh, very impressed, alhamdulillah. And today, inshallah, he's going to talk to us about how to keep the momentum of Ramadan and the power of small actions, inshallah, to stay consistent. So without uh, any further ado, Imam Abdullah, when you're ready, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان اليوم الدين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلي الحكيم رب الشرح لصدري والسر لعندي وحد لقة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله it's a blessing to be here I'm very honored to kind of resume the Tarbiya conversations الحمد لله so thank you so much to my beloved and for inviting me. Uh, how is everybody doing this morning? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wonderful. I want to preface by saying that there's an athar or a saying of Ali radiallahu used to say that the ibadah or the worship of the married person comes to all of us is 70 times more rewarding. Now, if you heard this hadith before you were married, you'd be like, why? But now that you're married and you have kids, you're like, yes, I want that. It makes perfect sense. Because it's difficult, especially with children. There is no taklif, there is no responsibility given on human beings more severe than being a parent. To the extent, there are two verses, I said two, two types of verses in the Quran 
Uh, one, which I think as parents, may Allah forgive us, maybe we pull this card here and there. We have made it an obligation upon you to be righteous and courteous and loving and respectful to your parents. We kind of pull this on our kids. But there's a verse that was revealed before this. You'll see Allah fi awladikum. That Allah also puts responsibilities on you with regards to your children. So we know that we have responsibilities to our children first before they have responsibilities to us. So keep in mind the sharaf and, and the honor and the blessings of and, and the abundance of reward of being married and the abundance of reward that comes with that. But another thing, subhanAllah, it's there is nothing coupled with the rights of Allah and his messenger. Nothing. I mean, how, can you imagine something that equals or comes close to the rights of Allah and his messenger? No, there's nothing except one thing, that Allah himself couples in the Quran and the, the rights of parents. I preface this because of the blessings that come with being a parent. And uh, whether you are DC or Marvel, uh, regardless of what you or your children enjoy, with great power comes great responsibility. And literally, subhanAllah, you have, you and I, we have the ability to impact the child who can literally grow up to change the world. That's your power. Children are blank slate. And I think Ramadan, by the grace of Allah, gives us that platform to really yeah. focus yeah. on children, not only because they're in an Islamic school, or, but even beyond. So I want to start my actual conversation with you with a few questions. And our uh, beloved parents who are online as well, if you'd like to join in, please feel free. What do you think is that one single thing that the ummah does? I'm talking about everyone. The ummah as a whole does in the month of Ramadan. Now, please understand, we know that by the virtue of the Quran and the Sunnah, there are months, there are weeks, or there are days that in and of themselves hold virtue. We agree with that being Ramadan, being the most virtuous of ones. However, what is it that we do as an ummah, as you do as a family, as a mom, dad, as family, as a community, as um, what is that one thing that we do in Ramadan that brings about cohesiveness, that brings about the virtue and extra abundance of barakah? What is it that the ummah does as a whole? That's good. Salatu so, Jama'a, we, we congregate and pray a special Salatu Taraweeh. Dua. Very good. We're getting warmer. Fasting. Very good. Alhamdulillah. I'll make it easy. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? What is the month of Ramadan all about? So take the Salatu Jama'a, take the Dua. What is the entire month of Ramadan about? Quran. That's it. The one thing that the Ummah does in the month of Ramadan that unites the entire Ummah is Quran. And it's seldom talked about, it's seldom thought about. It's the one ingredient. This is Hablullah al Mateen. This is the strongest and the easiest and the fastest way to get to Allah. One of my teachers, Rahimahullah, when I was in South Africa, is to say, your relationship with the Quran is your relationship with Allah. There's no second opinion about it. And because the entire ummah comes around in the month of Ramadan, and there's one focal point of the taraweeh, of the families, everyone, as Sheikh Mamdu was saying, what we suspended a lot of activities in the month of Ramadan, except one, one juz day. The entire month. There's one thing that Ummah focuses on, and that's the Quran. So the takeaway is, the more the Ummah, the community, the family, the parents, we focus on the Quran, the more we can prolong the barakah, the virtue, and the blessings of Ramadan. 
Now we can do that in many ways. We can do that in, in congregational prayer. We can do that in other places as well. But it has to be something that we do on a daily basis. Now, alhamdulillah, all of you are fortunate that you have teachers like Sheikh Mamdouh and an Islamic school, alhamdulillah, you have doing an amazing service and may Allah protect them and the institution and take them from strength to strength. But beyond that, that doesn't absolve or alleviate the responsibilities that we have. Actually, it's even more. And we ask Allah to protect our children. And they're being pulled all up from different sides. Every time they're on the screen, we're worried. Every time they turn on the TV, we're worried. If they're on YouTube, we're worried. Wherever they are, we're always worried as parents. So Allah, we ask you to protect them. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. So, the Qur'an. And the Qur'an, the premise of it is the building our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what? let's just talk about um, what is it that you did in Ramadan so we can get ideas. What is it that you did in Ramadan as a parent that you think helped you? And you think it's something that you should continue or you can continue after Ramadan? And again, parents on Zoom, please feel free to unmute yourself and give us some ideas as well. Yes. Um, I have a tendency to read the Quran on my phone. Okay. And um, one of us, Jersey had another type of session said that it's important for you to actually have the Mus'haf itself. Okay. Because your kids might see you on your phone, they think you're on social media. Mm -hmm. But if they see the mushaf, then they know you're with the mushaf. So that's a reminder for them to read these Quran. Allah. So the wonderful sister here is saying, sometimes you could be reading the Quran on your phone, but to the third person, who typically is our children, especially sometimes at home, they don't even seem like they are children. The third person, there the onlooker thinks you may be just scrolling through something. Um, so a another wonderful sister, a parent, I'm guessing, advised that you should hold the mushaf. And if I can add to that, you see, uh, typically there is like a rule in the Sharia: anything that you need wudu for is ibadah. It's like a maxim. Like if you need wudu, I'm talking about as a shot, as a condition. Do you need wudu to hold the mushaf? The actual mushaf you do, if it's not if it's not covered, mushaf. So you would need, like, to touch the pages, I'm saying. To turn the pages. You need to do right. Then I don't want to get into the discussion about what the most is. I'm just talking about turning the pages here. You need Ubu to turn and touch the actual page of the Quran. You need Ubu. So if you need Ubu, that means holding it is like that also. It's worship also. Right? And it's important to show our children that if we are holding. So that's wonderful. Now, that's one thing. What is it that we can do as a family? What is it that we can do as a family? We can pray in congregation. So one thing is you want to, my father, may Allah preserve him. I was, I was not a good child. No. No, no, no. I would be lying if I said I was. Very troublesome. But there's one thing that my father did. He made sure that every salah that we were at home, me and my brother, although we'd be fighting in the salah, but it's fine, we pray together. I remember growing up, we didn't have a masjid in our locality in Atlanta. Um, he led us, all 20 rakat, like he led us. And sometimes the neighborhood kids would come and pray with us. And um, I would be worried about finishing so I can go play like my Game Boy. So we would be competing with one another. That kind of gives you away where my age is also. It's okay. You can ask a man about his age. It's fine. <laughs> But praying in congregation left an impact, an imprint on my heart that by the grace of Allah, as I grew and got a little bit more sense, I understood that this is something that, that defines who I am. I can't leave it. Um, another thing that my father did, whenever he punished us, uh, it was two things. One was he would say, okay, this happened. I received a call from your school and you're going to finish 10 years of the Quran this weekend. That's it. And I sat in my room and I would be really upset. So I would read the Quran even louder because I'm angry. <laughs> that was my way of fighting back. That was his punishment. And other times it would be him setting a number of salawat ala nabi, sending salutations upon the Prophet and I have to meet, meet that. 
And I thought it was the strangest thing because other children got other things for punishment. I thought this was lame, actually. Like, do something else. But now I look back and I was like, no, this is maybe the one of the best things that he did. That in our deen, everything, you know, the common saying, Ya Rabbi, la malja wa la manja minka illa ilayk. There's no going away from, there's no escaping, there's nowhere to go other than to you. Uh, when, when we became parents, my wife and I, one of the strangest things is like when you, when your child is small and you shout at them or they're doing something, they cry from, from that initial shock, but then they come to you. Ya Rabbi. Our children know what we should know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah enable us. So, the first thing is Shah Ramadan al unzila fi al-Qur'an. The first thing we have to continue is that we have to continue with our relationship with the Qur'an because our relationship as a family with the Qur'an is our family's relationship with Allah. So one suggestion that I can make is, again, one of my teachers, Shaykh Sulaiman Hafizahullah used to say, or says, that there are three things that if you're doing at home, you can definitely make sure that your home is protected from all issues. One is daily recitation of the Quran, just single pages of family. But again, remember, children won't always do what we tell them to do. What did I say? Children won't always do what I tell them to do, but children will always eventually end up doing what I do. What I do is what matters. What I do is what matters the most. That's what they emulate. That's what leaves an impact. And when you're talking about tarbiyah, it's about growth. It's about nurture. You know, uh, subhanAllah, um, it's the foremost introductions that Allah uses in the Quran to introduce himself. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And Rabb, one of the, the key meanings of Rabb is that it's someone who nurtures something so that it continues to grow from stage to stage to stage. And that's literally what parents you do. You literally do tarbiyah, but it's a continuous process. You can't stop. And there's no tarbiyah without the Quran. What is my child if he doesn't have the Quran? What is my child if she doesn't have the Quran? What is my child if they have every degree but they don't have the Quran? So my concern has to be how strong is my relationship with my Quran so that for that will build the premise and foundation of my children, their relationship with the Quran. So daily recitation of the Quran, choose a page and read. Read the translation also, a simple translation. Um, take one and read. And on a, on a tangent, I'll mention this. You know, we may overlook as a community some um, the power of the Quran in the Florida prison system. There's 144 prisons in, in, in Florida, just in Florida. Most of them are privately owned. There's close to 10,000 Muslims incarcerated in Florida. Most of them have accepted Islam. They don't speak Arabic. They don't understand Arabic. They most likely have never seen a sister in hijab before or a brother with, with a beard or an imam as, as, as wonderful as Imam Mamdouh. No. They literally accepted Islam because they read a translation, a translation of the Quran. Now imagine if you can understand the Quran and directly, or uh, if you read a good translation of the Quran and you're reviewing it with your children. So may Allah give us tawfiq and ability. That's the first thing that we can do to prolong. Make sure there's some sort of activity that you are doing that's related to the Quran. I know a mother, uh, um, Alhamdulillah, she has four daughters and one son. Three of the daughters are doctors. The son is a very successful businessman. He's younger than me. And the other daughter, I believe she's in college right now. This is maybe seven, eight years ago when we first had this conversation with her. She spent two years reciting the Quran by herself in the middle of her home, two years. Her children wouldn't pay them. You're like, yeah, mom, I'm just reading the Quran. But she'd invite them, she'd invite them. After two years, one day, sisters, you know your biggest challenge is your husband. We're husbands, we know. We can say that, it's okay. After two years, her husband actually sat down with her. 
and he joined. And then slowly the children started joining. And because of her sincerity, today all of her children are have filled. They all have a margin class. With becoming a doctor, Allahu Akbar. What great what what can be more of an honor? And uqsin billah. If I can, if I just look at just from what's visible, there is no way the husband or the children are entering Jannah before her. Everything that they're doing is because of her. And that's why, you know, um, we say that awal madrasa is why the very first school is the lap of the mother because the mother controls, right? If, if she is focused on something, she can drive the entire family to it. So the first thing is Quran, an activity to drive a uh, relationship with the Quran. The second thing is the Quran, I'm just going to focus on the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah that talk about Ramadan. So the main thing about the Quran is so that you can be, you can protect yourself and your children from, from anything that will harm your relationship with Allah. Taqwa comes from the, the word waqaya, to protect yourself. So taqwa means Protecting myself from anything that will harm my relationship with Allah. So therefore, it's also protecting my children from anything that will harm their relationship with Allah. So that's what Quran will do. Quran will give you taqwa. Another thing that we need to do is, is the other verse after this says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ One of the things that I see that our children are, as a, as a counselor as, as, as well, is they are overwhelmed with the material world around them. And sometimes, may Allah bless you, mothers and fathers, you're doing your best, but you have that you have that cousin or that sibling who is not really concerned about how their children are growing up as you are. So when you interact with them for that one weekend, Eid weekend, you're like, yeah, Allah, that was the words. <laughs> it happens. So how do you, you have to have some sort of activity that build gratitude within children. Children, because of abundance, most of our children, to an extent, we are privileged. We have to admit to it ourselves, we are privileged. If they have a car and a, you know, if you have a car and, and uh, food on your table all the time, we are privileged. So that means you have to go an extra step, just like in Ramadan, we do a lot of things. There has to be a family activity that instills gratitude. In Ramadan, we do it together. It's usually called a club. You do it together and somebody's saying something nice, you're talking as a family. There has to be a family activity. Read the book, um, The Winter of Our Disconnect. A mother, this, and she wrote this book like a decade, maybe a decade, 12 years ago, she, when she realized that everyone is so plugged in um, to their devices that it was destroying the family. So the Winter of Our Disconnect, written by a mother, and her plea of what we need to do to revitalize the family. Everything is attacking the family system. So we need to make sure that we do something and an activity of gratitude is extremely important. So whether that's preparing a meal together, whether that's doing something together as a family, make sure that you're doing something to remind them that children, our brothers and sisters, just like them in Yemen or right now in Sudan, may Allah bring peace and aman to Sudan, Ya Rabbi. Something there to remind them that you are privileged and be thankful. Wallahi, the, the end goal of shaitan is one thing. And at the end, what is that? Can you imagine? Shaitan has his end goal is not to make you commit kuf. No, it starts with one thing the moment you and I become ungrateful to Allah. When, when does my relationship with my wife? become a challenge when I forget the blessing that she is. All of us have challenges. I'm a headache for her and she's a headache for me sometimes. But the moment it becomes a problem is when I forget the blessings that she carries. And the same thing, the moment we forget the blessings and the ni'am and the blessings that Allah has given us, the moment we become ungrateful is the moment our relationship with Allah, we pray less or the salah has no more khushu as it used to. We are not re because something has happened. I'm not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I used to be. So, an activity, and you guys are extremely clever and intelligent, way more than I. So, you can think about something, whether it's a gratitude journal that you do together, do it. 
do it because if you think it's challenging now, go talk to parents. Uh, I think next week I'm meeting with someone, a young boy who just literally became Christian. He he has a girlfriend and something happened and she convinced him to read the Bible and he felt after reading the Bible that he was touched by the Holy Spirit. And he was literally born, raised Muslim, became a Christian. I'm taking him on a lunch date uh, next week, I believe. It happens. So it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't get easier the more they go out into the world. But Filling those values of being grateful will always keep them rooted. The last thing that I want to mention in maybe two, three minutes is uh, dua. Dua could be that one activity that you also do as a feminist. The Quran, one page of Quran together, one activity together, gratitude journal, and dua. The beautiful verse, uh, the verse in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِبٍ There are about a dozen verses in the Quran where the verse typically starts with, oh, oh Muhammad Sallallahu they ask you, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَنْفَالِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيدِ So there's specific verses where the Sahaba would come and initiate the conversation. There's only one verse where Allah initiates the conversation. And it's only this verse. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ Those of you who are way more familiar with the Arabic language than I am, you will know that wa'idha is a beautiful way to start something. It's like whenever, however, whenever they come to you. So there's no condition of whether they're good, bad, they pray, they don't pray. No, wa'idha sa'alaka ibadi. And sa'alaka ibadi, this is not a person. Ibadi, Allah is, Allah is attributing all of us to himself, regardless of how much sins I have, regardless of how good or bad I am. So ibadi, anni, about me. Wa'idha sa'alaka ibadi, anni, fa'inni qareeb. There's not even a command of qul. It's direct. I am verily near. Ujibu da'wa tadda'i. Now here, da'wa has a, a that round time at the end. This is known as fi'al marra. Meaning, it's something that you can even do once. It's not something that you do daily. You just do it once. Subhanallah. What Allah subhanahu looks, what, what the verse is saying is, even whenever you come to me, even if, it, even if you haven't spoken to Allah in a very long time, even if you call on to me once, da'watan, and it's sincere, ujibu I will answer. Instill that relationship with Allah. Now there's two types of uh, uh, dua or supplication in the Quran. There's one litalab, where we're asking Allah for something, but there's one that's more of like, it's, it's munajat, it's like a conversation. So I'll give you an example. Uh, Nuh alayhi salam. Ya Rabbi, inni da'awtu qawmi layla wa nahar. Right? And he continues. Like, he, Nuh alayhi salam is literally telling Allah about his day. Wallahu a'lam. Allah knows. So why do you think Musa, uh, Nuh alayhi salam is telling Allah about this? Sorry? I'm sorry. I'm completing the verse. Oh, you're completing the verse. That's very good. At the end, kullama uh, da'awtuhum, uh, ja'alu asabi'ahum fi adhani, mustaqshal thiyabahum, wasarru, wastakbar, wastik. I mean, it's such a detailed conversation with Allah. Allah, they take their fingers, they put it in their ears, they pull their clothes over, and they run away from me. Why do you think it's time? Our children actually do this sometimes. Your child wants to tell you that, Mama, I went outside and I saw, I, 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 there was an ice cream truck, but they're going to tell you, Mama, I went outside, oh, there was a ladybug, and the ladybug went to this, and there was a dog barking. They want to tell you that you saw an ice cream truck, but before they get to the main subject, they're going to tell you all this peripheral. Why? Because you mean the world to them. You are the superwoman, super man for them. And for them, you are everything. You can do everything. Again, our children know us. Our, our children know how we should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a very common conversation. That you see Zakariya alayhi salam, the same thing. Uh, oh Allah, my bones have become weak and gray hair has started to spread on my head. Why are they telling? It's... It behoves the slave to share his or her day with their master. You only do that with someone you trust, you love, you adore. And the Anbiya, there are times where Musa salam said, Rabbi, uh, uh, inni lima min khayrin faqir. Wallah, whatever, you, whatever you send my way, I'll take it. There are those dua li talab, isti'ana, but there are also moments, and this is very typical in the Quran, Right? You see conversations. And that's one thing I feel like we don't teach our children. 
that they can sit, stand in the car anytime until Allah had a hard day today. Oh Allah, homework is really difficult today. Oh Allah, I, I'm, I'm having a... You need to teach your children that they can speak to Allah, not in the masjid, not when they stand for salah, not when there's an imam, not in jama'at. They can speak to Allah anytime. Wallah, this is the one thing that's missing. We read the Quran, alhamdulillah. We do things as a family, but one thing I see missing across the board is we don't speak with Allah. May Allah forgive us. Some of us even treat dua as like a drive through We go in, I want double espresso, almond milk, hold back on this, hold back on the ice, hold back on the sugar. That's not how you make dua to Allah, like give me this, give me this, give me this. As if I know what I need more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, there should be humility. No, we shouldn't treat dua like a drive through It should be a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Between every difficulty of every prophet and the faraj and the, the removal of that difficulty is a dua. The door is what? It's always a dua. Whether it's Nuh alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, you know, Adam alayhi salam, it's always a dua. And the door for you and your family, for me and my family, is learning how to converse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us tawfiq and ability. Jazakumullah salam wa alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum salam wa barakatuh. Barakallah Feek, uh, and this uh, beautiful conversation. Um, now, just to recap, I guess, uh, you know, reading Quran together is one of the means and the tools to continue the blessings uh, from Allah and to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second is uh, gratitude journal, just to teach our students, uh, our kids, uh, that how to be grateful and how to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And third and finally is the power of dua. Uh, not always to request and ask for Allah, but to have a converse, a conversation, a detailed conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our children, to protect them, to make the Quran their uh, mean of guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept uh, Ramadan from us, to accept fasting from us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to live another Ramadan and to be able, inshallah, to connect and draw closer to him. Uh, I wanted to, uh, speaking of the Quran, I wanted to, uh, I'm sure a lot of parents know about the passing of Shaykh Abdullah Kamen, uh, Hamdul Quran, the carrier of the Quran, a beautiful uh, person uh, that passed away here uh, uh, in, uh, in New Jersey. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless uh, his soul to shower with his mercy. His janaz is going to be uh, uh, today, inshallah, and uh, a lot of people are going to be. So inshallah, keep him in your du'a. Uh, I would like to make the for him as well too, so you know we can show Allah. Allahumma akhir lahu warham wa'afihi wa'afan. 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 Allahumma akhir lahu warham wa'afihi اللهم احشروا مع النبيين والصدقين والشهداء والصالحين حسن اولئك رفيقا وصلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وسكن وي ثانك يو فور كامينج تو اور تربيه بروجرام ثانك يو مان عبد الله جاك فور ذا بيوتيفول تاك اند وي وود لاف تو انتاتش يو ان شاء الله تو بي بارت اوف ذس بروجرام ان شاء الله وي هاف بروبلي فيو مور ويكس سو وي بي مور جمعات تو مين اجين ان شاء الله تراي تو Pack those uh, Fridays with uh, more sessions uh, for us, inshallah, before summer. Subhanakallahumma uh, bihamdi, mashallah, la ilahi, and the staff who got what I do with the day. Wassalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum no, I put a one year.